In 2005, Ben Rogers began filming an intimate account of his life as a heroin addict. I shouldn't be doing this here because people can see me from the window. There we go. No one knows what Ben intended to do with this footage because two years later, at the age of 34, he unexpectedly died. I've got no idea and, until after his death what he'd actually done, how hardcore it was. Hello. His 30 hours of videotapes reveal two very different sides of Ben's life. This is Dad and Sonny, look. He filmed himself as the loving son and brother he wanted to be to his family, while at the same time documenting a life going out of control. His life as a heroin addict. Push. I can't believe you could be so positive and sure in a morning. Oh, come on! I know things can't go on as they are. I've made the decision. Now I'd like you to make a documentary out of all the tapes that I've made. And I hope to God you look at these videos. And you see what kind of mess I got myself into. Them beautiful flowers. When Ben Rogers first picked up a camera, he didn't know he was about to film the last two years of his life. In my dad's room, mum's car. My room at the end with the window open. This is my home. While he openly filmed his ordinary life, he seemed determined to capture the dark side too on tapes that, until after his death, remained unseen by his family. It's my wonderful father, doing the curtains for the spare room. I love you, Dad. I love you too, bitch. We're talking to the camera, Mum. It's probably here now. Oh, no, don't. Also, Watch can this. I tell you I love you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. These are our family. My sister on a wedding day. Why did he start filming? I really don't know. It, it just used to annoy us because I hate video cameras anyway and he'd just pick it up all the time. Hello, how are you? We don't know what to say at all. <laughs> it was a standing family joke that, you know, oh, Beth, don't let Ben see you doing that. He'll have you on film, you know, you'll be captured. <laughs> but yeah, he was excited about it and I did wonder for a time whether this could be the thing that would turn him around. I just got off down the shop. Do you want to see him? Um, no, it's OK, Ben, thanks. All oh, right, Frankie's going to wake up today. It's, it's such an enigma to me. Why did a boy from a loving home with parents and other siblings that cared about him, why did Ben ever go down that route? I know he had a good upbringing. I know he knew all the, the, the difference between right and wrong, for instance. I know, and I know that he was a happy child. You know, there wasn't anything special about us, I don't think. We just were a very, very happy family, you know, a big family. We all knew that we were loved. We had a lot of time spent with us. We had stories every night. We had parents who supported us right through. So yeah, it was fabulous. He was a very normal kid, really, and very loving. He was a very lovable boy. Everybody liked him. He was very, very cheeky, got away with everything he ever did, and a lot of fun. He was, you know, he was a fun brother, really. He could walk into a room. He didn't have to do anything, Ben didn't, to get a party going. Ben was the centre of the party, and he didn't realise that half of the time. He didn't need to party as hard as he did, you know. But Ben had to take things just that little bit further than everybody else. One night, I remembered, I went to Ben's for a party and I quite liked him at the time. Things were going quite well, yeah. I thought, oh, yeah. 
and then Ben got completely bladdered and passed out. <laughs> he used to get out of control. I mean, if I went out for a drink with him, I mean, he actually said to me on, on some occasions, like, what's the point of drinking alcohol unless you get smashed? What is the point of it? I'm here whenever you're ready. I'm here whenever you're ready. All right, mate. I do think Ben was always searching for the next thing. I honestly don't know the first time he ever came across drugs, but knowing the Ben that I knew, you know, you would have thought, I'll give it a try. Really? Yeah, on your own. Sometimes you can. And there's your couple for now. Well, the first thing I knew was that he was smoking cannabis. And I didn't sort of think that it could lead on to, you know, what it did lead on to. Just got a half gram of Frankie. Right. Right. OK, you can pause it now. Well, he told his dad first because he knew he'd get a calmer reaction from his dad. He knew that I'd explode, you see. So it was here in the kitchen, actually, and he had his dad by his side. And, and Mike started the conversation by saying, uh, Ben's told me he's got a problem and we need to discuss it with you. He just came out with it. He said, I've got a problem, but I know I can beat it because I want to. I don't want to do this anymore, but I'm on heroin. What do you mean you're on heroin? I'm, I'm injecting heroin and I don't want to be on heroin and I need help, I need you to help me. So we very calmly said, yes, of course we'll help you. I've been staring at those things all morning. Straight into my mouth. I said, didn't it frighten you, no, trying it the first time? But no, no. I think he just wanted to try things and I don't think he ever thought he'd be out of control with it. He actually admitted himself, he said to me and Matt, he said, I'd never thought someone like me would get addicted to something like that. And it did, it took hold of him pretty quickly. When Ben began filming his life, he'd been battling his addiction for 14 years. Uh, at least I'm off the crack. At least I'm off the crack, hey. He'd spend short periods clean from drugs, but the craving for heroin would always prove too much. I know he said many times, I wish I'd never started this, I wish it had never happened, you know, I wish I could turn the clock back. But you can't do that, can you? He certainly didn't plan to be a drug addict. That wasn't his role, you know, his, his aim in life. Seeing so, I'm um, waiting for Rowan yet again. And Rowan's just 10 minutes, you I mean, it's fucking two hours. I was going to spend £50 with him, I'm not. I'm going to spend £30 instead. The last time I see him. I haven't felt any anger towards Ben at all. I'm sure of it. I'm sure it's the last time I'm going to see him. Frustration and... Why? Why did you make that silly mistake? And why couldn't you stop? Um, I just found Rowan up. He says it'll be two minutes, but the last two minutes can be hours. So, anyway, I'm going to give my folks a ring and let them know I'm OK. By the time he was 30, Ben was taking heroin up to four times a day. His veins were so damaged, he had to inject into his groin. Rowan! Give me an extra free one, an extra free wide, which is very nice of him. It's the B, two small whites, very nice of him. So we're going to mix it up and then we'll have it on film. First snowball in six months. Away. of 7 to 35 like me. Cannabis abuse can go on from fucking age of 12 and then magic mushrooms, bass, speed, 
anything else, kept him in up until he fucking hit the smack trail at about 18, just fucking get help. Just do something now, because it ain't fucking gonna get better, mate. It ain't gonna get better. I've been doing this fuck for 15 fucking years. Pretty fucked up. Whatever we did, we tried getting angry, we tried tough love, we tried supporting, and didn't matter. Didn't matter what we did. And what worked on one occasion wouldn't work on the next occasion. We, th we think, oh, we've got it sussed, this is the way forward, and then the next time it wouldn't work, so... Good morning. Yeah. Don't stay away from him, then. Don't feel me. pretty rough, actually. Oh, I feel just mates with Robert. Right. My ankles hurt, my knees hurt. Well, I'd give a miss if I could. My wrists hurt. Well, I mean, you could understand it if I was drunk. Gotta go. But the autopsy said... Should I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I'm relaxed. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to wake up, too. How's my addiction affected you, Dad? How's my addiction affected you? Makes me feel like there are times I felt ill yesterday. Last night was was like ill and hell. Collected. I don't want to upset you, Dad. Uh, I know. I want you to get well, Ben, but it does upset me. It upsets me more than you ever know. To see you sort of dropping off and your eyes are all droopy and your fingers cut and it just doesn't seem right. It get better. It can only get better. Dad was very gentle and tried very hard to get to the root of Ben and understand Ben. His mum was a lot more pragmatic and would want answers off Ben and I mean, it was Mum that took a photograph of Ben when he collapsed one night and then made him look at it the next day and said, this is what you are doing to yourself. Sometimes family's not enough. It's not enough. Family don't, family don't know everything, do they? You know, they don't know every, everything about his drug use. What do they know about it? You know, it's all secretive to him. Behind closed doors and away from his family, Ben was leading an extraordinary double life. A life he seems determined to capture on film. <laughs> Ooh, nasty. Oh, God, you got to get real close up of it there. Ooh, real close up. He always asked me to make sure I got the full effect, if you know what I mean, the shock value. I think there's a time when I was filming and he's shaving and injecting. And he's and I'm counting people and counting, this is 30 seconds, and he's about, I think, something like that, and he's unconscious. Before <laughs> and after. Two minutes later, and the state is in. It's <laughs> the first time that we got a before and after shot. As you can see, it's pretty fucked. <laughs> You go. You can wobble onto the floor. <laughs> ben. Yeah. <laughs> Look up. Oh. This is him. Twenty um, minutes later. It's lovely with the, the open stone. Is that a wood burning stove? It is. Twenty I'm minutes after. Mm -hmm. this door. I've seen one before. Right. Ben kept the seriousness of his addiction a secret for as long as he could. He managed to hold down a series of part-time jobs and at the age of 25 faced the challenge of full-time work. He was living in London and working in London. Um, we got him a, helped to get him a job at, at a studio, a film studio, which he absolutely loved. The time when Ben was happiest within his work life was when he worked in the in the film studio 
and I think that they felt that he had a flair and he had real potential. Ben kept his job as a runner for three years, but it was only a matter of time before his secret was out. He was gutted when he lost the job. Why did he lose it? Well, I think probably because he was, you know, not doing the job as he should have been doing because of what he was doing. I know how much he loved that, that job and I know how much it meant to him. So when that all fell to bits, that's really when I felt this is really getting out of hand now, this is really getting serious. <laughs> Ben would say things like um, he'd been mugged and he'd lost all his money. He'd put his bank card in the machine and the machine had taken his card, so he hadn't got any money. Can I have 30 quid, Mum? Oh, yes, all right. Mum, I can't pay the rent, I can't do this, you know. It was never for drugs, it was always to do with... I've had nothing eat to eat since yesterday. I don't know. He was very good at pulling our strings. Oh, yeah, he was very manipulative. But then they are. He would promise me, he would say, I haven't used, I haven't used for eight days, I haven't used for nine days. But I knew he had. It was lies. Always went to school drugs. Really, really, really. Mm -hmm. Hello, parents or something. Oh yeah. You okay? I'm just down on the beach. Yeah, I'm just going to get a ticket now. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, now I'm with a couple of mates. I can't speak. <laughs> Thanks, mum. See you later. Bye. Well, I think a lot of Ben's life was a lie. He, he did try and put an act on for the family, you know. It was more and more about Ben until his whole life was just about Ben. It was all about getting the next fix and, and then trying to hide the fact that he'd used. It's almost like a monster that lived alongside him. There was lovely Ben and there was user Ben. And I think there was an enormous tussle going on between the two Bens a lot of the time. Ben, my brother, is the Ben who was like the rest of us, just decent, family man, have a good laugh with him. But he got lost in Ben the Addict and Ben the Addict became 20 times as big as Ben the brother. We dreaded family get-togethers, totally. You know, we always, Steph and I used to say, is there going to be a Ben issue? We just used to call them Ben issues all the time. And, you know, nine times out of ten, there was. You know, Christmases, New Year's, birthdays. Even things like my wedding day, my children's christenings, was always, I hope Ben's going to be all right. For example, Christmas, there would be this big build-up because we've always all got together at Christmas, big family Christmas, big party. Snow everywhere, look. Oh my God, it's so cute. Yeah. You could see that he had either been using or was desperately uncomfortable because he hadn't been using. Hello. Happy Christmas. Hey. Hello. Hello. Presents. Yeah. Christmas tree. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ella. Thank you. Everybody was having a nice time. We'd had dinner and everything else. And, and Mike and I went outside to the front of the house to have a, a cigarette. And while we were standing talking, Ben went into the downstairs toilet and didn't put the blind down. And I knew that he was doing something. And I let it go. And that amazed me. Because I'd always said that if it impinged on my 
kids that I would have a big problem with that. But I just didn't see the point of adding more hurt and anger and angst onto a family that was that was struggling. <laughs> Steffi and Sam and I often wonder why we weren't more angry with Ben. You know, I think a lot of brothers and sisters would have just washed their hands of him. But we desperately just wanted to keep him as part of the family. <laughs> I keep pointing at you because you keep smiling at me. Me. My kids always knew what his problem was. And I think they accepted him how he was, but I think they were sad. I think initially it was Uncle Ben's not very well when they were little. And then, by, certainly by the age of 10, they were all aware that he had got a drugs problem. Because you couldn't hide it. Hey there, special brew. I love you. I had a nice haircut. I seem to have woken up with a bit of toothpaste in my hair. That I have missed you. At the age of 30, Ben got in touch with an old girlfriend. They soon fell in love, and Ben began the one relationship that might turn his life around. Well, they planned their life together. They were going to get married and have children and everything that young couples do when they're in love. When his girlfriend moved to Bournemouth, he wanted to be with her, and she loved him very much, and she still believed she could help him. Um, but she wouldn't have him living with her. She didn't want that sort of commitment unless he was, you know, out of his addiction. In Southbourne Cliffs Loop, I get a nice picture of the sea from there. Yes, can you see that nice bit of sea from there? Yes, you can. You can see the sea. You're missing the point, mate. And there we are. We are just about to have. We'll zoom in nicely on this nice hit of white we're going to have here. I'm brown. I'm brown, so we're going to kill ourselves. Cool. I always thought that she was his best chance. I thought if he, if he was going to make the commitment in his own mind to sort himself out, I thought he might do it for her. Put it on the dashboard, look at this. Yes, that keeps me going, eh? I'm trying so hard for you. Really am. May have my problems, but nothing that can't be beat. You gonna do me first? Yeah. The camera like that first, and I'll do you after. You can see he's living in the Peak District. I'll just put it on there like that. I can see us walking the fowls and spotting wild animals, chasing each other. growing together. She was his best friend, she was his advocate, she saw him at his worst, she saw him at his best, she tried to help him get clean, she made him believe in himself, she encouraged him, she spoke about a future with him, about having children with him, and she loved him very much, but the heroine was bigger. He really wanted to kick it because he wanted a future with his girlfriend. He really did. But he just, you know, he just couldn't do it. At the end of the day, he couldn't do it even for her. His white is good, though, you know? Yeah, I know. Just better than yesterday's. I can taste it on my lips already. Yeah. You split yours, haven't you? I think she did everything that, that she could, but he lied to her all the way through. It's a nice hit though, isn't it? It's not even facing me that man. Give us a camera and I'll do you. Quick. Whoosh. And we went through to Bournemouth once or twice when they were having particular trouble and she she'd ring ring us up and she'd be in tears. And um, because he did some pretty rotten tricks against her. He actually stole from her. But I do think that once she said, that's enough, I can't deal with this anymore, and, and walked away from him. I do think he gave up a lot then, you know, he did decide then, what's it worth, you know, there's nothing, nothing to strive for. Um, and I think my hope went as well. Ben spent several months in Bournemouth, 
using an assumed name for his drug friends. Hi, Carl, it's Danny. He started begging on the street for money and would sleep on the beach or in his car. All right, mate. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm at uh, Princess Court, which is notorious dealer's area. I shouldn't be doing this here because people can see me from the windows. There we go. Cooked up on a can from the street. Again. We try to give him so much encouragement, but it just doesn't work, you know. People say they've got to want to stop themselves. Well, Ben wanted to stop. Others say they've got to get right to the bottom. They've got to be lower than low. Well, Ben got lower than low. I mean, Ben was living rough down in, in Boscombe in Bournemouth. To get a shower, he had to go into a, a drug drop-in place. And he was begging, you know. I mean, I don't think you get much lower than that. How low do you have to get before you can do it? I don't know. Years of injecting were starting to take their toll. Ben was diagnosed with deep vein thrombosis and called his parents for help. So we, we persuaded him to come back home. We said, we'll get you well and, you know, then you'll be fine. At the age of 32, Ben was brought back from Bournemouth to his home village of Alton to be looked after by his mum and dad. His failure to kick his heroin addiction was now seriously affecting his health. What was he like when he got back? It was something else he'd failed at. So he'd gone down with hopes and aspirations and dreams of what he was going to do and he was going to get clean and, and he came back and he'd, he'd failed. And not only had he failed, he was also quite ill by that time. I shouldn't feel this old, 32. It was almost like he'd been on this mad journey and, you know, he'd come home at the end of it, really. It wasn't good for anyone, eh? At that stage, I just felt it was really sad seeing him living at home with mum and dad. And to me, it was a, a little bit like he'd lost a bit of his spirit. We were quite relieved to get him back, really. For Mike and I, it was less worried to have him at home than have him away, because at least we knew where he was when he was at home. We could keep tab tabs on him, you know. But I think he resented us bringing him back, and I think he felt that, you know, we'd forced him almost, although there was no force involved. But I think he felt as though he'd been made to come back. See, if they'd left me in Boston, I'd be able to make money. Even just driving people around, I could make money. You know, I could even beg 60 quid on a Friday night. I'm not here, all fed up so quickly. This is what I am and what I've been for a long, long time. I'm a drug addict. Living in a place like Alton, everybody knows everybody's business. And what shocked me when I saw his face, because Ben's quite baby face complexion, is how he aged. You know, it was starting to ravage him. It was shocking to see what it had done to him. I'd seen him out the shop a couple of times, and I'd seen people going in fetching alcohol for him. Outside the shop, I'm 12 be short, two cans of white lightning. When in doubt, have a drink. Knock yourself out. God bless all the good people, eh? It's Gene Seddon. It's Gene Seddon. What are you doing? Friend of mine. What are you doing up here? I'm looking for 12p. 12p? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know that 12p or anything is not going to make any difference to anything. 
you know, you, people were lost with him. And a, a lot of them were saying, you know, well, when's he going to sort of grow up and get real? And people just moved on with their lives, and unfortunately, Ben didn't. Everyone knew Ben was ill. You know, it, it didn't take a genius to realise from seeing him go for a walk down the village how bad he was. He looked a mess. A majority of the time, it used to stink of booze. He went really skinny and... To me, it, it just looked like a heroin addict. Oh, fantastic chip night. This is what we like, and my dad's fantastic eggs. This one, yeah? We're having tomatoes or something. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, they don't eat very well, you know, but, but as his mother, I was anxious to feed him, feed him up, you know, so I'd make a nice dinner, um, give it to him on a plate, very often in his room, sometimes downstairs, sometimes in front of the television. Hey, I'm doing. And he'd never get to the end of it because he'd just, he'd just fall asleep. He'd, you know, he'd have taken something and his head would get lower and lower and lower and sometimes it would end up actually in the plate, you know. That woke him up there, that brought him to. <laughs> Awful waste of good food. We asked him not to do it at home. We, you know, you, you, you try all these things, but like I say, it's such a battleground in the end that it, sometimes it's just easier to turn the other cheek and, you know, try and ignore what's going on. It, it has an awful effect on your social life. We didn't do a lot of socialising here. I know once or twice he showed us up badly when we had people here where they had to leave early because Ben arrived back. I used to say it's almost like having a special needs child. You can't have respite for a weekend, you can't put them into care for the weekend, but you can't leave them on your own. What, what do you do? I mean, the only other option was to tell him to go. And at one point, we did refuse to have him at home um, for two weeks, and he was wandering around the village with a black plastic bin bag with his belongings in and sleeping rough, and that's worse. You know, that was worse, really. Maybe it would have been better if he'd gone to prison and, and did a prison sentence, you know, maybe that would have cured him. I don't know, but... We were overprotective. He was our youngest son. You know, we loved him to bits. He was a very loving son. And it's very hard to be hard. Ben's parents had twice put him through expensive detox programmes, but both times he'd relapsed. Now, with his health deteriorating, he decided to try and do it himself and go cold turkey. I know I've failed before, but I've never felt like this before. And now I'm ready. I'm going to push for rehab as hard as I possibly can. OK? Yeah. I love you. Start of a new life. I love you. I love you too. It's a turning point in my life. Yeah, it's a real turning point, Ben. OK. Best chance you've ever had. I just think that maybe the different approach is the one that you need. Yeah. It's the only chance, isn't it, Ben? I love you, Dad. Ben would need to go five days without drugs to get detoxed, and his parents locked him in the house to stop him from scoring. Quit off methadone and heroin is the hardest thing in the world. Just a wind up. What? A new guy? First day? Initiation type thing? And Harry, Harry, full hearing capabilities. Yeah, but in my defence, Bex. Andy, do you 
Sweaty. Look, like I've got chicken skin. Very emotional. Very emotional. Yeah, you've done very well, really. I mean, I have visions of you trying to get out through the door and that, but you haven't. You've, you've played by the rules. Yeah. And I know it's not been easy. And certainly, there's people praying for you right now, Ben. You have been for several days, really hard. I'm really re relentlessly praying for you. Yeah. Later that night, Ben got so desperate for drugs, he jumped out of his bedroom window and broke his foot. Days later, he was back on heroin. Ben, I'm appalled at you. I'm appalled. I can't believe you're doing this. I can't believe you can be so positive and sure in the morning yeah. and determined. I am. That's why I'm saying that we set up a camp bed in the in in the toilet. I go and get a five worth of pot. And how long's your five worth like, of pot gonna last you? Withdrawing from drugs isn't taking pot while you're doing it. That's stupid. No, it's not. Helps me sleep. I can understand how people kill people. Do you know that? I can understand what makes people kill people now. No, can I take All I want to do, Mum, is set up a camp bed in the toilet. For how me, many hours? And let me detox myself for three days. For how many hours? Until you're yelling for the car keys or money. Or you're throwing yourself through a bloody window again. No. Mm. Well, I desperately want to do this. <laughs> well, it's a bloody nightmare, all this is. Just like a bloody nightmare. And it's all about you, 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 isn't it? You know what's the hardest thing of all, Ben? You give us a little bit of hope and then you snatch it back again. I don't know. I've had to come to terms with my feelings for Ben and, and, and it would be very hard for me to be bitter and angry with him now because, to be honest, he did ruin what should have been our retirement. Mike couldn't retire because we needed the money, you know. We, we had, he had no pension scheme, and that was because of Ben. You know, we had no surplus money. So Mike was working. So I, I, could, I could be very angry and very bitter about Ben, but I won't be, I can't be, I mustn't be, because I gave birth to him, and, and I, I knew the other side of Ben. And we loved him. If you weren't doing what you did, Ben, we wouldn't worry about you, and then you wouldn't have to worry about us. I'm staying alive for the duration, Dad. There's not much of a life left. We have if we want it. I haven't, Ben. You've got to be practical about it. I'm 71. And I'm still working. You don't need to be working now, Dad. If I stopped working, then we'd have to sell a house because we can't afford to live here. Dad, you don't need to keep working for me. Seriously, you don't need to keep working for me. Please. I've got to, Ben. You haven't. Anyway, God bless. Do you want me to get out of the car and walk down the road then? No, it's okay. For sure. Yeah. Stay quiet. Um, I wasn't yeah. aware of people coming to the house, but I was I knew that 
Dad would sometimes drive Ben to the dealers and park round the corner. I'll give me one of them back and I'll go straight across the road. One of them lighters back. Um, yeah. Ben. Yeah. I just can't believe that Dad, who is such a decent, hard-working man of great faith, would be put in this position that he would have to go and seek drugs out for his youngest child. What we did was wrong. What we did was illegal. We were party to helping him, and, and providing him with money was helping him. It is hard when you see all your money going up in whatever. It caused a lot of heartache and a lot of worry. And I've lost my fucking can of cider. And where the fuck I put it? I've looked everywhere and I can't find it. Drugs make you very paranoid. Motherfucker. His mind was in chaos. He couldn't live in his skin. You know, drugs affect your mental thinking. It affects your memory. I don't know what I've done with it. It was like living with Jekyll and Hyde. Where the fuck have you put it? You see, when you're on pills, you hide things. When you're on drink, you hide things. When you're on smack, you hide things. You never know where you put things. Which way does this? Does that leave a kind of side around there? Did that leave a kind of side around there? No. Oh, all right, mate. Oh, bollocks. No, I had it. Just lose everything, including your life. Oh, come on! I knew I was losing him as a friend because he couldn't control it anymore. He wasn't Ben. You know, he was somebody else now. He went in his own little world. I don't think he realised what was going on around him and what damage it was causing. When you're on drugs, your head's all over the place, your body's hurting. It's just horrible. His life wasn't worth living, it was hell for him. All right, it was hell for us too, but it was worse for him. You cannot live at that level of a, depravity, B, chaos, and C, complete preoccupation with a chemical substance and it not impact on every other area of your life. And it is not compatible with life. What? What do you want me to do? I don't I'm want to be. I want to see how I am. I'm telling you how you are. I'm tired. No, it's not tiredness. Don't give me that old bloody shit. I think just having this camera in his in his hand, he was in control of the camera. You know, if he wasn't in control of anything else in his life at all, it was his way of hiding behind the camera, turning it into a film and it doesn't seem as real. And that's what that's really what I think he was doing by filming it. It's like he was watching it happen to somebody else, rather than it actually having to deal with the fact that it was him. At the age of 71, Ben's father, Mike, was diagnosed with a terminal illness. This proved to have a profound effect on Ben. It all very rapidly changed for Ben, I think, when Dad was diagnosed with his cancer. Um, he just seemed to want to do something about his own problems then. But if there was a change at all towards the end, I think it was the realisation that he'd messed up big time. And I think Ben would have liked to have done something positive for Mike those last few months. 
For the first time in his life, Ben decided to check himself into a detox unit at a local hospital. Yes, ma'am. Have you got a bag for tomorrow? Yes, uh, one you wash for me, it's on the... No, bag. Oh, yeah, yeah, so one you wash for me, do that. Oh, camera, do you want to say hello? Eh? Oh, camera, do you want to say hello? Hello. Take your dirty cup. This time was the only time he went and sought the um, rehab for himself. I just need somebody to see me, I need a chance now. It, he was quite frightened, I think. I can't wait to get into hospital, I promise you fucking when I do it. Life's going to change, Mum. Dad, I'm sorry. I want you to be proud of me for once in my life. And not just think of me as a fucking wanker, shit, a junkie. Fucking alcoholic piece of fucking crap. Because I'm not really, I promise. I promise. This perhaps would be the time that he was going to sort himself out. Drop you bastard. Three or four days before we had the, well, I don't know if I really want to do it creeping into the conversation because I think he at that time was quite afraid that he actually couldn't survive without the drugs and that was the last time that I spoke to him. What do you think get over with? Bastard cunt for bastard life. So fucking tired. This fucking shit. I'm so fucking pissed off with it. Why the fuck have I got to fucking do this to myself all the fucking time? And I know I'm dying. I know I'm fucking dying. I feel like this is I'm a fucking kid. I just fucking, I know I'm fucking, my body's packed up and I'm still fucking doing it to myself. I fucking hate it. I think I'm dying. I think I'm dying. Pain my stomach's hurting constantly. Coughing up blood. I feel ever so sick. I've been passing blood from just about every orifice you can imagine. Really not very well. Really not well. So if this is my task, then please, Lord, please forgive me for my sins. I've never been a bad person. I never meant to be. Oh, my eyes are going now. I love you, Mum, and I love you, Dad. I love my family. I'm sorry, sorry that I failed.